Hi everyone and welcome to the Private Practice with Soul podcast. This is the first podcast for counsellors that just don't align with the traditional approaches to business and that want to use their spiritual gifts, talents and interests to create, you guessed it, a private practice with soul. So look, leave it to me to provide you with everything you need, including strategies that you can use to increase your income, reduce your workload and of course increase inquiries and referrals to your beautiful soul-led private practice. I love it so much. If you haven't done it already, grab your journal, grab your pen and let's begin. Hello, hello. Happy Wednesday. I'm just going to close down my Facebook so we don't get any notifications. There we go. All done. How are you? I am so pleased to be here. Oh my gosh, I have to tell you before I get stuck into the podcast, which is going to be a good one because it's about money mindset and stuff. Um, guess what? You know, I'm really, I'm so back into my tarot at the moment and I've been doing all of these readings lately and um, I've resumed a practice that I used to have myself and essentially like it's not that difficult I'll tell you what it is and you can try it too if you like but um basically I just do a mini meditation um ask for guidance pull a card um the card I would always say you know about my intention and I would hold my intention in my mind while I was shuffling and then I would just wait for a card to come and um usually a card just flies out so someone was asking me if I could tell them the name of my deck so I will I'll just get it for you now it's a bit hard to read because it's a beige deck with gold foil writing so you have to kind of move it around a bit to to see it but it's actually called lucid dreams beginners tarot um by a company called Saint Soliel now I kid you not I have it must be about 30 or 40 decks of tarot cards and oracle cards and everything but I keep coming back to these ones oh I've just ordered some more which I'll tell you about another time but I keep coming back to these ones because they're so beautiful oh my gosh you you should see them like these cards they're sort of a latte color and they've got all this gold foil on them um and it's drawings that are mixed with well it's mixed media I think um, because then there's like some photos of some beautiful roses and then there's a great big gold pentacle and a cloud and all this sort of beautiful stuff but the other reason that I really 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 love them is because they um, have markings down the sides um, that show you what planet the cards associated with which is super important the zodiac sign obviously um, the element you know, and numerology and and stuff like that. And, oh, my gosh, it's just so much fun. And these cards are so beautiful, you know. Um, And these cards, these were um, a deck of cards that I first started reading with. So I got these cards about, I don't know, a few years ago. Um, And the reason that I got them was because I saw them on Instagram (laughs) because I'm one of those people that gets everything off Instagram. I saw them on Instagram and I fell in love with the pictures. I was just drawn to the pictures. And you know what? Ever since, I just keep buying cards, buying cards, buying cards. And I... I always just keep coming back to these ones because the pictures are so beautiful. Um, The other thing too, it makes them a really great beginner deck if you're thinking of starting to get into tarot. Um, These are a really great deck for you because they also have a few keywords on the top and the bottom, um, which when you're first learning are really, 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 really helpful because let's face it, there's 78 cards (laughs) that you kind of got to memorize-ish um, before you can then start putting your own spin on things and, and really making it your own, you know. Um, but anyway, so they're really helpful that way. So anyway, um, years later, they're still my favorite cards because they're so beautiful and they're so luxurious and, oh, they've got gold down the side and, oh, gold suns on the back and, oh, they're just stunning cards. Um, anyway, what I was going to tell you was I, I started this practice, right? So I set my intention. I was waiting for the card to jump out. And anyway, nothing jumped out. So then 
I kept shuffling, shuffling, shuffling. And my ego was like, just pull a card, woman. Like, just come on, just do it. And then my soul was like, no, Brooklyn, just wait until one jumps out like that. So, well, she doesn't have that voice, but I was just doing that for effect. But anyway, so the card that jumped out was three of pentacles. And my question was, full transparency, um, my question was, I asked my guides and, you know, source and everything, what do I need to know for my private practice today to, you know, help support financial success for myself and my clients, right? Um, And anyway, so Three of Pentacles comes out and I'm like, hmm, I don't think in all these years I've ever drawn the Three of Pentacles. And I have a look at it and guess what? It is three women like from the 50s or something they're all in jumpsuits um and they're all happy they've all, they they kind of look like army women you know they kind of got that you know that hairstyle where it's rolled at the sides um back and the the fringe bit at the front is sort of rolled back um and one's kind of in a suit one's in some overalls i think and the other one's in a in a jumpsuit with a tight belted waist but they they look beautiful and um you know, they're each carrying this really beautiful gold foil pentacle. And so um, it's these three women and they're sort of, it's photo, it's like black and white photograph of these women that's been cut out and put onto a drawing of, I would say they're inside some kind of temple. Um, They're in, there's a big archway behind them and beautiful um, archway above them. Um, But on the floor, there's a lot of dirt, um, like piles of dirt. Imagine like, I don't know, excavation or something like that. Anyway, so the Three of Pentacles is um, so powerful because three is about collaboration, right? So three is about three is saying, you know, you got to get your team together. You've got to um, stop doing everything by yourself. You've got to start trusting in other people and you've got to start asking for help, asking for some support, right? So I'm, I'm thinking to myself, okay, and obviously it's going to be women because, you know, I'm just going by the picture and I'm going by my intuition. My intuition is telling me it's going to be these two other women. And then the card that this is associated with is Mars. So Three Pentacles is associated with Mars, which is a masculine energy. And you know me, I'm all about the masculine and the feminine. So Venus obviously is the feminine one because, you know, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. That's how I used to remember it. So the Mars being the masculine is all about you know, creating structure, creating foundations, putting stuff together, making it happen and getting it done. And so I'm like, okay, so I need to, you know, connect with these two other women and I need to create something and they're going to help me create something, uh, you know, create a foundation that's going to help me generate more income for my business in a way that's also going to be able to increase the finances for the businesses of the clients that I work with, right? So I'm getting all excited. And then, um, oh, what else? Oh, and it's the earth element. So of course, the earth element is all about grounding. And that's important with the three of pentacles, because that means that um, I'm creating something that's solid, that's going to stick around for a while. And um, I really need to have my, you know, my business head on. Okay. So anyway, so exciting. You'll never believe what happened. So I've got this coach, right? And I love her. Like she has been my best coach because I just align with her so, 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 so much. And anyway, I was um, speaking with her this morning and she said to me, hey, you know what? I can help you with this. Here's a resource. And she gives me a resource. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this was so kind of her to give me a resource. Wow, thank you. And I was I was just like over the moon that she gave me this resource. And the resource that she gave me was um, two emails that are going to help me um, let people know when I've got new things to share with them, right? So I've got an email list and every Friday or Saturday morning, sorry, I try and send everybody on my email list who opens it, um, 
a something free. So I think last week it was some social media templates or something. Um, so anyway, I've started to do things like sell this stuff as well. So people on my list get it free if they open the emails. If not, they can buy it on Instagram or Facebook. Um, but anyway, so she gave me these two emails that I can use in future every single time I've got something to share with my audience with my email list with my audience um, so that they can get it and so that was really great because well who likes writing emails right well I don't I'm not a big fan of email as you know like um, it's not my jam I don't spend any time in my email Um, I check it once a week to be honest like it's just I'm on Facebook everyone connects with me on Facebook (laughs) and lately Instagram so that was that and then A friend of mine from an online group that we're both in, we started chatting away and everything. And then she says to me, hey, why don't you start um, an Etsy shop? And I'm like, what? And she says, yeah, 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 I'll help you do it. And then boom, she just sends me all this stuff. And she's like, "Um, yeah, it's going to take you like not long. You could knock it off in 15 minutes and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, you should sell this and you should sell that. And I was like, really? Seriously? She's like, yeah, 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 go and do it. Do it, do it. So I guess what I've been doing today. <laughs> I'm opening an Etsy shop. <laughs> and I just thought it was so funny because I was getting ready for this podcast, you see, and I'm looking so it's um Tuesday today. You're listening to it on Wednesday, which is the next day. Um, but anyway, when I was getting my microphone and everything ready to record for you today, um, I saw my card again, the Three of Pentacles, and I thought, oh my gosh, that's my coach and my friend. And they've both helped me. Like, and it's us three women, and we're, you know, I'm allowing myself to receive, and they're happily helping me. And it feels weird getting helped. Um, you know, it's just it's so strange when somebody wants to help you like and there's there's no um strings attached and so anyway I have just loved today so 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 much I've just been oh my gosh I can't tell you what I'm creating because I want to give it to my um clients on demand members first um because I want to check it with them and make sure, like, I love to test things before I take them to market. So anyway, yeah, I'm setting up this Etsy shop and um, I I really feel like this is great because it is going to help me create this extra level of income for my private practice. And as I'm creating the content for the Etsy shop, I'll be giving it to, um, you know, some of my memberships and some of my, uh, the students in my courses. Um, and it's going to help them call in more money for their practices as well. So, that's the power of a tarot card <laughs> when you know what you're doing. So, um, yeah, I had to share that with you because I knew that you would appreciate that. Um, and it's just so much fun, right? It's so much fun. Um, I'm actually doing some private practice business readings um, using tarot for uh, people who join the mini membership with me my success hub um so yeah i'm giving away a bunch of those at the moment for newbies when they join um and yeah i think there's also like a whole bunch of people who've already booked them um so they will look at their readings in the next two or three weeks and i can't wait to do them i feel like i need to take a day or two off work so that i can just focus on getting the readings done but anyway That's not what I'm here to talk about (laughs) today. I just wanted to share that with you because it's it's like put me in the best mood. You know, the cards are awesome. Okay, so, and you can use them for business, obviously. Um, Why do I keep saying obviously? I'm so sorry about that. I'll try not to do it anymore. I don't know where that's come from. I'm not hanging around anyone that says it all the time. Um, It just keeps coming out of my mouth for some reason. Okay, so on to the show. What I want to do is talk to you about your fees because you know what? I think having the Counselors Connect group and the ACPPO group is so, 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 so valuable because I want to help everybody. Um, I was going to say, obviously, (laughs) I want to help everybody. And one of the things that I hear in both of these groups sometimes is, you know, fear about the fees and, you know, people thinking, 
if I charge this much, I'm not going to get any clients. And, you know, um, I do okay when I'm marketing, but then when somebody finds out about my fee, they ghost me or they go AWOL, you know, whatever. So here's the thing. I want you to know the reason that people are not booking in is nothing to do with your fee. Let me say that again. The reason people are not booking in with you has nothing to do with your fee. Now, of course, there's always going to be a percentage of people in the community that can't afford your fee, but they're not the ones that you're attracting to your practice, right? Especially if you've already got your fees on your website, which I highly recommend you do because it not having your fees on your website just feels a little bit suspicious. Um, you know, I think it just my own hypothesis here, but if I was choosing a counsellor and I could see the fees on one, but the other one was hiding the fees, I'm probably going to call the one that I know how much she's going to charge. <laughs> um, and I just wonder how many of your clients are probably doing the same thing. Like if you're not comfortable with your fees, we need to sort that out so that you can get to a place where you are comfortable enough to let the public know what you're going to be charging. Um So that's the first thing. The second thing is um, you need to understand, I guess, how to market the practice. So if you're getting on the phone with potential clients and, you know, the whole call is going really well and you're connecting and, you know, you're enthusiastic and you feel this person's a great match um, and then you say the fee and they say, nah, it's out of my price range, I'm not going to do it. I want you to know, number one, Um, if they don't know what your fee is and then you tell them at the end, you're probably going to get that kind of answer because they're coming in cold. They're not expecting, you know, a particular fee. And then when you give it, they're going to get a bit of a surprise and they're going to say, yeah, I've got to think about it. Um, But if you are advertising your fee and people are aware of what the fee is, um, and then you have the conversation and you go, you go to book them in and they backtrack and they say, do you know what? I've got to think about it. I've got to check with my partner. I'm not sure if I can afford it at the moment. Da, 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 da. I want you to know you didn't lose that potential client because of the fee. I think you're, you know, you're looking for something to help you understand why they didn't bite the bullet, so to speak, and book a session. And here's what I want you to know. Um, it's got as I said, nothing to do with the fee and it's got everything to do with how you have that conversation. I'll tell you what I know to be true and that is, um, you know, like I can only speak for our group. So I've got, um, I'm just thinking now, I've got the Success Hub, the Inner Circle, Clients on Demand, the ACPPO and Counselors Connect. I think there's between seven and 8,000 members now across all of those groups. And what was I going to say? Oh, and when I check my statistics, like my group insights, I can see that like 93 or 94% a lot of the time um, uh, members in the group have identified as female. So um, I think what happens is sometimes because of the industry we're in and maybe because of our tendency to be givers or very give in, Some people make the mistake of instead of having, a, if you want to call it an inquiry call or a a quick chat or something, they end up providing counselling. Did you know that? Like they end up actually providing counselling. And do you know what? It's not their fault. It's that nobody ever taught them how to do these inquiry calls and some people will say things to me like oh yeah it was a great it was a great call and we're on the phone for 45 minutes and I helped them with this problem and blah 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 and we were vibing it was all amazing and then I said to her you know would you like to book in she said no I feel great I'll come back when I'm ready and she still hasn't booked in Brooklyn and what did I do wrong and I'm sure it's because of my fee it's not because of the fee it's because you it's because you gave a way of free counseling session um so have a think about how you're doing these inquiry calls okay have a think about how you're doing the inquiry calls because um 
you should be leading those conversations. And if you want help with this, um, let me know because there are ways that that you can learn to have these conversations um, so that you can actually start booking some people. But it's not your fee that's the problem. It's, yeah, it's just that you need to learn new skills and nobody's taught you yet, so it's not your fault, but you just need to learn some new skills in um, how to have a conversation that's going to convert. And convert just means take the person who's calling, a potential client, um, and and support them in, in getting help and connecting and booking in their first session with your practice. That's what a conversion is. So, um, you know, it might be helpful for you to think about the last four weeks maybe and think about how many calls or how many inquiries you had and what your conversion rate was. So if you had 10 people make inquiries and two booked in, well, you're just going to divide two by 10 and multiply it by 100 over one. That's going to give you 20%, right? So you've got a 20% conversion rate. Normally that would be good, but not for 10 people. (laughs) Um, So we want to really, 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 really try and increase that. Um, as much as we can and the only way that you're going to be able to start doing that is by becoming aware of how you're conducting yourself when you have these conversations okay Um, you need to lead them not your client that's the first thing the other thing is that when you're having the um, conversation with a potential client, I know some people get really stuck in their heads about the selling part. And here's the thing, I'm not going to BS you or anything. You're in a business. You're not running a um, charity organization. You're not running a non-for-profit. So you're in business and business means that there's going to be selling involved. That's the reality. And the sooner we can make peace with that, the easier this is going to be for you right now if you go and have a look at the history of the word selling which you can do on google (laughs) um, if you have a look at the history of the word selling it simply means exchange right that's all it's an exchange you're giving something they're getting something they're giving something you're getting something that's it it's also called flow (laughs) um you know there has to be this energy exchange And that's how I look at it. Um, I always see it as an energy exchange because everything's energy to me. Everything's energy in my world. So I see my service as energy. I see, you know, a cash transfer as energy. I see a receipt as energy. I see um, my client as, as being, you know, energetic, all of this sort of stuff. So what I want you to understand is that um, if you've got some concerns around selling, it might be helpful for you to do some mindset work. Um, Because here's the thing, like, it's only you that's got the issue with it, not your client. So for example, I know if I want to go and do something, I'm just going to pay for it. I know if I want to have supervision or see a counsellor or get a new coach, I've already got an idea in my mind of that that's going to cost me um, and I'm ready for that and that's okay. That's absolutely cool with me. But if I had an inquiry call with a supervisor or a coach or a mentor and they were like really nervous about telling me the fee, I would think that was weird and I would I would be like, do you know what? I don't think we're a good match for each other. Um, good luck with your business over there. I want to work with someone who's really confident in, you know, and it's not their fee. I, I just don't want to have to deal with a nervous person. Like I don't want to learn from a nervous person um, or someone who who's lacking the confidence. And so think about yourself and the energy that you're vibing when you discuss your fee with a client. If you're apologizing for it, if you're saying, oh, I know it's really expensive and I'm not so sorry and, oh, but you know what, if you went through a psychologist, you, you'd you probably be paying this anyway and, oh, I could. if you're doing all of that, it's just strange for your client and they're 
they're probably not going to book in because it's it's strange. <laughs> or if you're hesitating and coughing a lot when you and spluttering when you're trying to to say the fee, it's a bit strange and it's not going to instill confidence in your client, right? Um, like imagine if you had to go and see a dentist and he was like that, or or she or they were like that, you know, really like apologetic of the fee and everything. I don't know. I think most people would find it strange, especially because counsellors are professionals. <laughs> Um, shouldn't really be apologizing for fees. The other thing too is um, something I learned when I first started charging fees was a whole lot of my stuff came up, but it was stuff from my past around, you know, me growing up. So, you know, I've shared with you before, like I'm the eldest of six, grew up with um, my, you know, my dad left when I was 11. Um, so I grew up with a single mum and we had no money. We were totally reliant on handouts and charities and food vouchers and all of that sort of stuff, um, living well below the breadline in Frankston in Victoria. Um, <clears throat> and what was I going to say? this was good oh and so yeah my money mindset was like any time we were lucky enough to go out my mum would always say don't touch that you'll break it and I can't afford to replace it and then we might go to jail or something like that you know put it down I can't afford for you to break it or other people go on holidays and like when I was at high school um it was my camp it was my like my first ever camp and I couldn't go because we couldn't afford it and my mum was like other families go on camps we don't you know and I I wasn't even allowed to stay home like I had to go to school by myself and go in a class lower than me for that whole week which was just humiliating um and then even when I went to do my debutante ball of course we couldn't afford that and you know my mum was like well other people do that sort of stuff but we don't and we can stay home and we can watch a movie and have cheesels and you know coke and it's going to be amazing and you're going to love it so this whole time I had these money stories of like uh, money was for other people um, people who had money could do anything I couldn't um, people who had money and could do anything were also very greedy um, yeah they were the haves, I was the have not, and I would never be a have. And so this was all the stuff. So then when I started to charge a, a fee, it felt so uncomfortable for me. And do you know what? I really mucked it up big time. Like the first few clients I had that were paying the fee, um, some of them were like not happy about it. And so I said, oh, we're right there. No, I'm so sorry. Okay, don't, don't pay me which is just ridiculous. I can't believe I even did that. Um, and then other people were like trying to negotiate my fee and I let them. I let them. Oh, my gosh. Which you can imagine what those clients ended up being like. You know, they weren't my dream clients. Um, <laughs> and then there were other things where like I would sometimes enforce my cancellation policy and sometimes not. And do you know what I mean? But it was nothing to do with my clients. It was all in my own head. And um, it took me years to, you know, even learn about money mindset because I I never even knew it was a thing. I mean, you don't learn about that in psychology. <laughs> it was something I learned about in coaching. Um, so I, I did a lot of work on my own money mindset. And guess what? Even now, right, um, even now when I go to change my fees, still all my stuff will come up and I'll be like, mm, no one's going to book in at my new fee. And every single time, sure as eggs, straight after I go through the rigmarole of, you know, uploading the new fee or whatever, within 24 hours, somebody else signs up for something and they don't even push back on, on the fee. Do you know what I mean? Like you get a different type of client, you attract a different type of client, etc., etc. So here's what I want you to understand. Like you're not alone if you panic about your fee, but I want you to understand your client doesn't care about your fee. Um, most of your clients will not care about your fee. Um, what they will care about is two things. Um, if you draw attention to your fee by carrying on and being nervous and hesitant and trying to justify it and talking about, oh, well, you know, counsellors, we don't get rebates. And so, you know, I'm so sorry and all of this. If you do that, you're not going to get as many people booking in as if you just speak with confidence. Here's how I tell people my fee. 
And my fee is, I think I told you before, it's $397, $400 a, a session for counselling with me at the moment. Um, and all I do is I'm just, I'm so detached from my fee. I just, if there's an inquiry, I get them to fill out like a form. And on that form, it says, it gets them to say yes or no. It says, this is my counselling fee. Are you aware of that? Yes or no? <laughs> is this something that's, you know, affordable for you at the moment or do you need a referral to somewhere else? Option one or option two? Do you know what I mean? So I, they're all qualified before they come through. So the money stuff has already been handled. Um, so there's no big shock for them. They already know I'm going to charge $400. Um, and the purpose of the call really for them is they already know me. Um, they've already seen me on social media uh, or read my emails or been in a membership of mine or something like that and they already know what my fee is so the whole purpose is really like how do we get started so there is no selling involved does that make sense so at the beginning of this podcast, I was sharing with you if you're in business you're going to be selling selling simply means an exchange right and here by using an intake form um, like you know, setting it up similarly to the way that I do, clients know before they book that call, yes, there's going to be a fee. No, there's no discounts. No, there's no concessions. This is what it is. This is my expectation. Like even on my, um, what do I want to say? The mentoring and supervision, right? That's 360 plus GST, which is $400 a session. And on my application form, it says, are you aware it's $360? Yes or no? Are you okay with that? Yes or no? <laughs> um, and the other thing that it says is, are you aware that there's a commitment of time to work with me? Yes or no? And is this something that you're okay with? Yes or no? So when they come through, the, there's nothing to sell. They're already sold, right? Right. This is what I want you to, to know. You're, when it comes to like this idea of selling, you are not convincing anyone. You're not doing anything you shouldn't be doing. You're not forcing anyone. You're not pushing anyone. No, you're not doing any of that. What your marketing does, if you're doing your marketing well, which you probably are if you're getting inquiries, let's be honest, your marketing is doing the selling for you right? Every time you post a photo, that's marketing. Every time you share a post, that's marketing. But hey, guess what? There are other things that you do online that you might not have thought were marketing. For example, every time you leave a comment in a Facebook group that might not be very nice, that's marketing. Other people are going to see that not very nice comment and they're going to say, hmm, she's a coach, she's a supervisor, she's a mentor, better not work with her. So be mindful. And that stuff can't be erased, right? Once it's online, it's online forever. So be mindful that your marketing is more than what you post, um, you know, what you schedule to Facebook or Canva or Hootsuite for your posts. Everything you put on your social is marketing. Now, um, my advice is to just be real, just be yourself. And <clears throat> if that makes you uncomfortable, then the other piece of advice that I have would be always speak from your soul. Whether you're doing a post, a podcast, a YouTube clip, an email, whatever, always speak from your soul. Allow yourself a moment before you put your beautiful little fingers on the keyboard <laughs> Um you know, give yourself that time to really tune in and ask yourself, you know, if I'm writing from my soul today, what is my soul wanting to share with the world? What's my soul wanting to share with my clients? That is your marketing. Step two, um, head over to your website today and check that your fees are on it. Step three, set up an inquiry intake form, right? super simple simply just get their name email phone you know the general stuff there um and then ask them a couple of questions and put your fee in there say are you aware that a counseling um session with me is going to cost you 150 dollars tick the box yes or no um is this 
okay with you or is this not okay with you? But maybe like um, you don't even have to say, is this something you can afford or not? Um, but just bring it to their attention. Okay. Um, one of the other questions I have is if everything goes well on our call today, are you happy to put down a deposit to get started with your counseling or this or that, you know, if you're selling packages, for example. So you can ask that question as well. And what that does is it lets them know that you're serious, you're not mucking around, um, your time's precious and valuable, um, all those sorts of things, you know. And then if they tick the box and they say, yes, 150 is fine with me, yes, I can put down a deposit today or yes, I can, you know, pay for my first session or whatever you, you do with your business, write that down. Then there's nothing for you to sell on the call, right? The call is just a matter of you confirming everything that the person's put in their intake form and then send them on the path to the next steps, which is getting started. They've already said they want to work with you. They've already said that um, they're well aware of the price and they've already said that they can pay that deposit. So book them in. There's no selling, okay? So that's the really big thing that I want you to understand um, today. It's not, they're not, this is I can't figure out how to say it your fee is not the reason people aren't booking in it's how you're presenting your fee and it's because you're not qualifying people before they um, book in with you okay oh and before I go I know some of you will say um, you'll implement this which is amazing because I, I love action takers right because <laughs> I'm one um, but I know that you're probably gonna some of you will say oh gosh Brooklyn you know what since I did this since I put my fee on my website and since I asked the question about the fees in my intake form I've had less people coming through do you know what that's not bad. That's actually a good thing because you've saved yourself how many 45 minute sessions that weren't going to go anywhere right that's a good thing. It means that the people who do connect with you, do want to work with you and are ready to book in, okay? So yes, you may get fewer inquiries because it's filtering out, it's weeding out people who, you know, might not be the best match for your practice, okay? And it's going to save you lots of time, lots of energy. And imagine how energized you're going to feel when you get to talk to clients who actually want to work with you, right? Amazing, Okay, so that's all I've got to share with you today. <laughs> um, if you have any requests for podcasts, I'm always open to ideas. You know, someone was saying to me recently, um, you're a machine. How do you keep coming up with all these ideas for content creation? But I don't know, like I just do. <laughs> so, yeah, but if you've got anything that you would like me to speak to or give you some help with, I'm more than happy to do that. So. I hope that this was super duper helpful. Um, have an amazing day. Um, yeah, if you want to grab some free templates, you can. Um, if you jump into the Private Practice Success Hub, um, you can go and grab them. And the other thing too is so many people are purchasing the fully booked private practice planner that's nine dollars and um if you would like to have a look at that let me know like just let me know on instagram or facebook um and i can send you the link to that but it's a um, planner that helps you boost your visibility so that you can get these types of clients contacting you um and and booking into your diary okay anyway I hope all of this helps. I love, 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 love um, being helpful uh, for you because I know what it's like <laughs> to be where you are um, and I want to see you have results. That's my big thing. All right, have a beautiful, 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 beautiful Wednesday and I will talk to you again in the next episode, which should be on Saturday. Okay, bye. I hope that you loved this episode as much as I loved putting it together for you. To get more resources to help you in your private practice, head over to Instagram. My handle is at the private practice coach. And also, if you want more inquiries and referrals for your business, let me know. I have a program called Clients on Demand that opens every quarter, and I can absolutely get you some information for that as well. You are doing an amazing job. Thank you for sharing your gifts with the world. Bye.